Today we're going to make a liquor cabinet using a 3D printer. Now obviously we didn't 3D print the entire cabinet. The walls and panels are made out of triple wall polycarbonate and the tubes that you see are EMT conduit. We did 3D print all of the brackets and hinges that create this exterior skeleton. But before you can 3D print, you need to 3D model. So I laid out the conduit and the rough dimensions of the cabinet and then modeled in these brackets. 3D modeling is a whole topic unto itself and I'll give some recommendations for software and tutorials at the end of the video. The brackets that I modeled may look really complex but they're actually really simple. I just made basic geometric shapes and added and subtracted them until I created these sort of art deco style brackets that had cylindrical holes in them for the conduit. I'm using a Pulse 3D printer from Matter Hackers. It's a compact and versatile 3D printer that can print more exotic materials like nylon, carbon fiber, and ABS, but I'm just gonna use basic PLA filament for this project. The Matter Hacker software automatically adds scaffolding supports and a raft to the model so you don't have to do that manually. And these support pieces tear off easily with a pair of pliers or a box cutter. I'm going to use these pieces directly as the structure, but if you wanted a more efficient process for mass production, you could make silicone molds out of these and then cast them in a resin. Although if you did that, it might be a good idea to drill out the holes for the conduit after. MT Conduit is a cheap and lightweight metal tubing that can be found at big box improvement stores like Home Depot. You can get a 10 foot section of it for about four or five dollars and it cuts easily with handheld tube cutters. I painted the conduit with Rust-Oleum protective enamel in flat white. For the walls of the cabinet, I'm using triple wall polycarbonate that I got from the Greenhouse Megastore. I've been having a lot of fun with this material. It's clean looking, lightweight, quite strong, and it cuts easily with a circular saw. The cabinet's just going to be glued and screwed together, but the sequence is quite important. I slid the support brackets and the hinges onto the conduit before adding the corner brackets. I really wanted to make sure that everything fit nicely before adding epoxy. I mixed up some two-part Gorilla epoxy and then applied a little bit on the ends of the conduit before inserting the corner brackets back on. At this point, I'm only gluing the corner brackets to the conduit. I'm making sure that the corner brackets are perfectly parallel to one another. Once the epoxy for the corner brackets cured, I was ready to move on to the hinges. Now I only want to glue the washers on either side of the hinge. I don't want to glue the hinge itself because otherwise it won't rotate around the conduit. So I very carefully applied the epoxy to the conduit and then slid the washers right over. Sliding the washer can push a little bit of the epoxy into the hinge, which can cause it to bind. So you have to go slow and be careful. Once the epoxy for the first washer had cured, I then applied the epoxy and slid over the second one. Now if you don't want to be accurate with your epoxy in a process like this, you could just drill a hole through both the 3D printed washer and the conduit itself and then drive in a screw. Now a little bit of epoxy got onto my hinges, but I just made sure to move them up and down while it was curing just to keep it from forming a tight bond. Now that the 3D printed pieces were secured to the conduit, I was ready to epoxy this exterior skeleton to the polycarbonate panels. I peeled the protective film off of the polycarbonate and then put down some blue painter's tape just to show me where I needed to apply the epoxy. I then placed the exterior skeleton using a scrap piece of polycarbonate to set the right distance between the hinges and where the front door panels will be. But before we get any farther, let me tell you about the sponsor for this video, NordVPN. Hi, Ben here. As someone that makes their living on the internet, digital security is really important to me. I use NordVPN to create a layer of security between me and potential hackers or identity thieves. It's also really handy when I travel to different countries where social media platforms that I use for work may be banned. A virtual private network not only protects me and my accounts, it also lets me tap into the internet that I want no matter where I'm at in the world. So go to nordvpn.com slash homemade to get 75% off a three year plan and use the promo code homemade to get an extra month for free. Now I'm very impatient when it comes to signing up and installing new technology, but NordVPN was quick and painless. So seriously folks, protect your digital self today. So once again, go to nordvpn.com slash homemade to get 75% off a three year plan and use the promo code homemade to get an extra month 
for free. So protect yourself online today and let's get back to the build. Once the epoxy on the side panels had cured, I was ready to assemble the entire cabinet. The cabinet's currently on its side, and I just added epoxy to glue in the top and bottom polycarbonate panels. I used some 99 cent spring clamps that I got from Home Depot to hold the panels in place while the epoxy cured. A small paintbrush was really handy for applying just the right amount of epoxy. All right, the sides are all secured. Time to add in the doors. I applied a little bit of epoxy to the underside of the hinges and then put some light weights on them just to hold them nice and firm to the polycarbonate doors. Now I didn't want to trust just the epoxy to hold on the doors, so I actually pre-drilled some holes and screwed in some pan head screws as well. I also added screws to all of the interior connections as well. For the finishing touch, I printed up a couple of handles and then epoxy does on as well. The cabinet only weighs about 12 pounds, so I just screwed on a 2x6 cleat that I painted white, then hung the cabinet right on top of it, and then drove in screws from either side to secure it. I cut some additional polycarbonate panels to use as shelves, and then drove in some white finished screws to hold the shelves in place. This worked and was nice and easy, but I probably should have 3D printed some cool looking brackets to hold these interior shelves. Even though the cabinet's really lightweight, it's plenty strong enough to hold full bottles of liquor. I really like how the hinge mechanisms look and work. They remind me of a combination of a Art Deco doorknob and the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars. In fact, the whole aesthetic of this piece is really weird, but I kind of like it. And obviously, if you added some lights to this, it could make it really over the top. So this project is a good example of how 3D printers can produce components to provide the connective and aesthetic details for assembling ready-made materials. Okay, so I'm not an expert in 3D printing. I've done a few projects, mostly stuff like the ones you just saw where I use something like conduit as a structural material and then I print brackets that hold up the different pieces into place. Now this is a great way to start, but there's also some analog alternatives that would work just as well. For these brackets, if it was just about a structural connection, I could have used off-the-shelf conduit connections. Granted, they wouldn't have had the same opportunities to connect this cleanly to the polycarbonate, but there are things already into place. So I've experimented before with even a little bit crazier geometry by printing brackets for other pieces of conduit to make these table bases. Again, that worked out well, but it is a lot of print time relative to the size of pieces that you get. Now, where I have been the most successful, I feel at least, is in printing prototypes that I then turned into silicone molds and made concrete projects out of. Now I started small with this heart-shaped box, uh, I did the pavers out of this system, and then I also did the fire pit. Now this is a system I feel really confident in, like I think it works great, I think it really utilizes the idea of printing things once or twice, there is a time investment into the modeling and into the actual printing process, um, but you can keep using those same molds once you make them out of silicone to make multiple concrete items. Now the good news about the bracket system that I just experimented with is that these brackets could be put into production. Now we could either do this in a very low tech way, making molds and then pouring in a resin or something like that, or I could even outsource these to a company that mass produces 3D printed parts like Shapeways or something like that. Or you can even invest into injection molding plastic. If I really thought this was a good product idea, which I don't, uh, I could go on Alibaba and find someone that could make me these uh, same pieces that were made out of injection molded plastic. So overall, a good first episode into 3D printing furniture. Um, I'm getting more familiar with the software. Oh, speaking of software, for these, I used Form Z. Now, I use Form Z because I invested a lot of time when I was an architecture student to get good at this software, and this was one of the software types that we had at our computer lab. 
it is not great software. It hasn't been updated relative to its competitors. And so I'm actually kind of disappointed that I spent so much time learning this way back in the day. And I'm now kind of like, you know, it's so fast for me to model with, but it's not, doesn't have a bright future for this particular piece of software. So what I recommend is a software that I am now teaching myself, and that's Autodesk Fusion uh, or Fusion 360. Now, this is an incredibly powerful 3D modeling software that's good for either engineering, industrial design, and it has excellent capabilities for digital fabrication. The other good news is that it's free for amateur use. Uh, they always are changing how that actually works, but basically you can download it and say that it's a trial and start using it for free. And then if you want to use it for a professional use to make money off of, uh, you can then pay for the subscription. But I think at the very least, and double check me on this, there's a free sort of one year usage for amateurs. And then from there, you can probably figure out a way uh, to, to keep using it uh, if it's sort of rewarding to you. So again, uh, Autodesk Fusion 360 would be the software I recommend. I've taken a few tutorials. Um, I'll put a link to the tutorials that I find really helpful for learning the software in the description box below. All right, so thanks for watching. Uh, we'll probably put out one of these types of 3D printed furniture experiments about every two or three months. Uh, I don't want to overwhelm the channel with digital fabrication, but I do think it's interesting and this is kind of an interesting thing to explore in the future. So thanks for watching. Bye.